Hey guys, welcome back to the Intuitive Tennis 24-7 channel. I'm here in Palm Beach County on a windy and rainy day. I'm getting a break from the rain now. And I'm going for a little walk right here by the Intercoastal. But I want to talk about what I saw yesterday on TV. I saw Novak Djokovic win the World Tour Finals. And even though he didn't play the entire year, we all know why. He had a spectacular year. And there's no doubt in my mind that he is currently the best player in the world. But the question is, is he the greatest player of all time? I'm going to get to that in this video. But I want to tell you the way I think about goats. And if you go to my Instagram and you look at my stories, you will often see that I name different players goats. Like I will say that Federer is the goat. I will say that Nadal is the goat. I will even talk about players from the past like Borg, Connors, and McEnroe call them goats as well. Because here's the thing about calling somebody the greatest player of all time. You have to put other factors into play. For example, how many Grand Slams, how many Masters titles, how many tournaments would Borg have won if he continued to play? He retired in his mid-twenties. Think about that. You have to take that into consideration. What about McEnroe? He had the best year anybody has had in the history of tennis he was 82 and 3 if i have my numbers correct and after that he decided to take time off and basically never got that form back and he was on a winning streak up to that point and if he had if he would have kept going then who knows how many wimbledon's john mackerner would have won who knows how many grand slam titles he would have won uh, what about Rafa Nadal? This is my favorite player of all time, by far. And I believe that Nadal could have won at least three more Grand Slams that he didn't win because of injuries, especially at the Australian Open. Or what about someone like Sampras, another one of my all-time favorites? How many tournaments would he have won if he would have kept going and played into his 40s? This is why calling somebody a GOAT is a super tricky thing. And I don't think it's fair to the legends from the past. But having said all that, I do think that when we compare the three best players in the history of the game based on the numbers, which are Federer, Nadal, and Djokovic, if you compare those three guys, even though when we look at their technique, when we look at their overall game, it's very even, it's gonna be hard to put one above the other. But I always had this belief because Many of you guys think that I'm not a Federer fan, but I, I'm a Federer fan. I'm just more of a Nadal fan. And I wanted Federer and Nadal to win when they faced Djokovic. I'm gonna be honest with you, but I've always felt when it came to the big three facing each other that Djokovic had a little bit of an edge. And most of this edge is, and this is gonna surprise you that I'm gonna say this, but it's from a willingness to win that's greater than the other two guys. Yes, I said it. I do believe that Djokovic wants it more than Nadal or even Federer. And that's hard to believe because Nadal is the ultimate fighter. But there's something inside of Djokovic, something that propels him to overcome the results of the other two. And I do believe that Djokovic is going to continue to play. Maybe until he's 40. He is 35 now and he already has 21 slams. He has 38 Masters, he has six World Two Finals. I'm telling you, he's going to win between five and ten more majors. I think he's going to play into his 40s. Maybe he's gotten lucky that he hasn't gotten uh, the bad injuries that Federer has had or Nadal has had. Maybe it's due to the fact that he does take real good care of his body. I'm not saying that Nadal doesn't or Federer didn't. I'm not saying that at all, but he does put a lot of effort in and maintaining his flexibility, his physical health, and he puts a lot of thought into his diet and all that. And I do think that that does play a big factor. But also there's some luck involved. Let's face it, we can't control uh, getting injured all the time. It just sometimes happens. So for that reason, there's no doubt in my mind that Djokovic is gonna surpass all the record books. He's gonna get the most Grand Slam. He's even gonna pass Jimmy Connors' record of the most tournament titles won. Uh, that is my prediction. Whether you want to call him the greatest of all time based on numbers, uh, you can do that. A lot of people are obsessed 
with the GOAT, but I don't think it's fair to the great players of the past to put one player above another because there are so many factors that come into play. It's not only the fact that some players retired earlier than others, uh, the fact that some players got more injured than others, but also some players played with equipment that was inferior to the equipment that players are using today. So for those reasons, I don't think it's fair to say that one player is the GOAT. In fact, something that's going to come to the Intuitive Tennis uh, YouTube channel very soon is a list of tennis levels. And I've thought long and hard about this list and I'm finally ready to make this video. It's basically going to start at the very bottom at the recreational level, which is split up in four levels. Then it's going to go into the high level, which is split up in two levels. Then it's going to go into the elite level, which is split up in two levels. And the top level is the GOAT level.